Well, good morning. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. I was going to say happy Christmas like they do in England, but this is America. <laughs> All right. So this morning, uh, we're going to be camped out in Matthew chapter 1, starting in verse 18. Um, and so we're going to be looking at the announcement of Jesus' birth and the names that are ascribed to Jesus, uh, what they mean and uh, what they represent as well. Every so often, um, as my family is sitting around the dinner table, uh, my daughters, they want to know what their names mean, right? And so we go around the table, of course, and uh, we say what their first name means, and um, then we go to the middle name and what that is and what that means. Florence, her name means blooming. Matilda, her name means battle mighty. Lucille, her name means light. And our little Edith, her name means prosperous in war. So pretty awesome names. And there's something so special and so fun about knowing um, the meaning of your name. And certainly not always, but sometimes names can be uh, kind of insightful into someone's life. Almost like a preview into that person's personality. Then the Bible is full of examples of where a person's name and the meaning of their name serves as a sort of Easter egg into um, a particular story or um, a particular passage. Uh, take, for example, Abraham. Abraham, he didn't have any children until he was 100 years old, despite his name meaning father of many. And of course, as we know, his descendants are now as numerous as the stars, and he's often known as Father Abraham. Some aren't as meta as Abraham. For example, Isaac, uh, his name means laughter. And his name was such because his mom laughed when, he was, when she found out that she was pregnant. Uh, Esau's name means hairy because, well, he was hairy. His younger brother Jacob, his name means he grasps the heel. Um, and his, uh, this was for two reasons. One, that's what he was doing to his twin brother when uh, he was uh, during birth. Um, but it's also an idiom for deception, as will be the case during his entire life. Um, but what about the most important figure of the Bible, Jesus? What does his name mean and why? Whenever there is a birth announcement, a name seems to always accompany that announcement. The Christmas story in the last half of Matthew is no exception. And so today we're going to be exploring Jesus' birth story and his two names given during Matthew's account. And so join with me as I read Matthew chapter 1, verse 18 to 28. Now the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed, to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. And her husband Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to, uh, and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. But as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, "Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which." Uh, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took his wife, but knew her not until she had given birth to a son, and he called his name Jesus. Father God, we thank you today for Christmas. We thank you that um, in a silent night you broke through and took on the likeness of a baby. That you came down on earth to dwell with us, to be with us, uh, to love us, and in that love you... Um, you gave up your life for us, to save us from our sins. And Lord, as we uh, look at this passage, I pray that you um, open our hearts and minds to your word and to your uh, knowledge and um, to your wisdom. Uh, we give you all the glory in Jesus Christ. Amen. 
And so if you were in church two weeks ago, uh, Pastor Ken, he gave an exceptional uh, overview of this passage, focusing on the nature of our Messiah, coming and, uh, and the faith and obedience of Joseph. Um, by the start of the first verse of Matthew, we might think that Matthew will be sharing Jesus' birth story. Um, and that's sort of true. Uh, but really, uh, Jesus' birth story is mostly found in the first couple chapters of Luke. But what Matthew does share is, in the, is the pregnancy announcement of Jesus from Joseph's point of view. And so while also reminding the readers of the prophecies regarding Jesus' birth. After Joseph discovered that the woman he was planning on marrying or betrothed to was pregnant, he resolved to instead break off the marriage. And so during this betrothal stage, they were both referred to as husband and wife, as we see in verse 19. But a betrothal was not a formal marriage as we know it today, uh, but it did still require a divorce. And Joseph, being a just man, planned to divorce Mary as quietly and as tenderly as possible. But before he could divorce her, in God's mercy, an angel came to Joseph in a dream to comfort him and to provide him with more guidance on the situation that he found himself in. It's amazing how God always provides us with just enough information, uh, sort of our daily bread of comfort during times of uncertainty. And so in this short passage, Matthew provides two names during the birth announcement. First, the angel instructs Joseph to name him Jesus. And secondly, Matthew links this birth to an old prophecy from Isaiah chapter 9 concerning the name Emmanuel. And so as we look at the Christmas story, we're going to be exploring these two names that are used to describe our Savior, Jesus and Emmanuel. Uh, interestingly, with the name Jesus, we are given the why, uh, but not the meaning. However, with the name Emmanuel, we are given the meaning, but not the why. The first name is Jesus. Verse 21 says, The angel says, She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Jesus, which, is our English, which in our English Bibles is the translation of the Jewish name Yeshua, means Yahweh is salvation, or the Lord is salvation. And so Matthew doesn't share this meaning of the name Jesus. Uh, perhaps it's because uh, it was a common name during that time. Jesus, or Yeshua, was a common name for boys of the first century Judea. Uh, it was so common that throughout the Gospels, Jesus was referred to as Jesus of Nazareth as a way to sort of uh, clarify or distinguish which Jesus they were talking to or referring to. And so if you look back at Matthew chapter 1, verse 21, the angel directs Joseph to name his son Jesus. And we don't have to wait very long to learn the reason behind the name Jesus. The angel explains that he will be given the name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. His name shall be Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. And he did. He died on the cross, taking on the sins of all mankind for our salvation. In Acts chapter 4, verse 12, Paul evokes the name of Jesus, saying, And there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. There is no other name by which we must be saved, except at the mention of the name Jesus. Later in Philippians chapter 2, Paul writes that because Jesus took on the appearance of man, humbled himself even to the point of death on the cross, that God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. There is not one knee that won't bow down to the mention of our Savior's name, at the name of Jesus. And so that's the first name that we see in Jesus' birth story from Matthew. Jesus, or Yeshua, which means Yahweh saves, because he will save his people from their sins. The second name that we see in this passage, and one that we're going to give the most attention to uh, today, is the name Emmanuel. Verse 23 says, Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. Unlike the name Jesus, 
With the name Emmanuel, we're not given the reason why he will be called Emmanuel, but we are given the meaning. Matthew doesn't leave us guessing what Emmanuel means. Uh, it's like he's saying, he will be called Emmanuel, and oh, by the way, that means God with us. And so at first pass, it can be a bit confusing um, that the angel says to name him Jesus, and which in obedience Joseph does. But Matthew mentions a prophecy that says he will be called Emmanuel. So which is it? Is it Jesus or Emmanuel? I was actually watching a video of a, a Bible scholar, and he points out a tiny detail that I think helps explain this difference. Uh, let's look at back at verse 23. Matthew points to the prophecy that says, And they will call him Emmanuel, or he will be known as Emmanuel. When the angel instructs Joseph, he says, You will call him Jesus, like you, Joseph, are to name him Jesus, um, but he will be known as Emmanuel. They will call him Emmanuel. It's not that his name won't be, it's not that his name will be Emmanuel, but when they think of Jesus, they will call him Emmanuel. He will be our Emmanuel, our God with us. Actually, Janelle and I went to EAC's uh, Handle Messiah a couple weeks ago, um, and we were both humbled by one of the numbers titled, uh, For Unto Us a Child is Born. And so this song sings the lyrics of a familiar prophecy from Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. And this, uh, which says, For to us a child is born, to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. It then proceeds to declare unique names for our coming Messiah. It says, His name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And just like the Isaiah 7 prophecy that Matthew recounts, these are names that Jesus will be called or will be known by. He will be our Wonderful Counselor, our Mighty God, he is our everlasting Father, our Prince of Peace. He is our Emmanuel. And like the rest of the Matthew's Gospel, he likes to take it a step further and connect what is happening to the Old Testament prophecies. This time, Matthew quotes Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14, saying that all this took place to fulfill what the prophet foretold. A virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. So what are we to make of his name, Emmanuel? What does it mean? And if we emphasize different parts of the meaning behind Emmanuel, we get a glimpse of just how miraculous this birth story really is. We get insight into the sovereignty of God and his complete plan from the beginning. His plan for us to dwell with him and him with us. This name, Emmanuel, points backwards and forwards. First, the title of Emmanuel highlights Jesus' deity. God with us. Secondly, Emmanuel also serves to highlight Jesus' character and desire for a relationship. God with us. First, Emmanuel is a literal fulfillment of God with us. God dwelling among his creation. And I think we often take that for granted. The God of creation, the almighty, magnificent, supreme, all-knowing God, the one who existed before there was nothing, he came to dwell with us. The first two verses of John chapter 1 tells us that, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. John tells us that he, Jesus Christ, existed not only before his birth, but was present at the formation of the universe. At the beginning there was the Word, and this word was with God and was God. John continues in his introduction of Jesus, and later in verse chapter 14, or I'm uh, sorry, in verse 14, it says, And the word, Jesus Christ, became flesh and dwelt among us. And we have seen his glory, glory as the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. The word became flesh and dwelt among us, dwelt among us as a baby. Consider this. In order to identify with his people, Jesus took on the likeness of a defenseless little baby to a poor family on a quiet night. Our King of Kings was born into poverty. He could have presented himself among the best of the best, the most noble of families. Instead, he entered our world among the poor to a young couple about to be married without much means. He took on flesh to identify himself with us. 
the writer of Hebrews tells us why this had to be the case. Why he chose to take on the image of a man. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 17 and 18 says that, uh, it says this, he said, He made to be made like his brother in every respect, so that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest to the service of God, to, pay, to make propitiation for the sins of the people. For because he himself has suffered when tempted, he is able to help those who are being tempted. Jesus, fully God, became fully human, so that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest. He might be able to atone for our sins and help those who are being tempted. Our Messiah is the fulfillment of God with us, so that he can also be the fulfillment of Jesus. Yahweh is our salvation. The second aspect of the name meaning of Emmanuel is God with us. The second passage of Jesus' title of Emmanuel reinforces the idea of a relational God, one who desires to walk with us. Not that he needs us, but that he desires to be near us. For a time, Jesus left his heavenly home in order to literally live and walk with his people. Going back to the first chapter of John, verse 14 says that the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And that's the true message of Christmas. God taking on flesh to become fully human as Jesus Christ in order to save his people from their sins. Paul, in his letter to Timothy, writes plainly on why Jesus came to earth. He writes that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Just uh, Jesus came to earth to save us simply because he loves us. Romans uh, chapter 5, verse 8 says, God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. God desires to dwell among you, to be with you, and to love you. He took on flesh and suffered and died because he is love. And in his perfect love, he saved us. It's almost as if the meaning of the two names mentioned in this specific passage work together as an outline for our salvation. Emmanuel, so that Jesus. Emmanuel, God with us, so that Jesus, Yahweh, brings salvation. God came down to earth to dwell among us so that he can save us from our sins because he loves us. And God continues to desire to have a relationship with you. It doesn't end on Christmas. Jesus, in the Gospel of John, speaks of sending the Holy Spirit to dwell inside us. Jesus says that, And I will ask the Father, and he will send you another advocate to help you, and to be with you forever, the Spirit of Truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. Jesus will be called Emmanuel. He was there from the beginning, took on flesh to dwell and identify with his people, and now advocates for the third person of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit, to live with us and be in us. At the two ends of Matthew, we get a picture of God with us. In the beginning of the book... We just read, we read the account of Jesus' birth, and it says that the virgin will give birth and call his name Emmanuel, God with us. At the other end of the book, Matthew chapter 28, the last line of the book, Jesus leaves us with these words from the Great Commission. It says this, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always, to the end of the age. Some of Jesus' last words on earth come in the form of comfort and assurance. He will be with us. Jesus promises us that he will continue to dwell with us. That he has not left us to fend for ourselves. Uh, he loves us and promises to be with us always, to the end of ages. He will be... He, w he is and will continue to be our Emmanuel, God with us. Father God, we thank you for this Christmas season, a time to stop and reflect on how you sent your one and only Son to be our Emmanuel, to be our God with us. We thank you for his perfect love and um, sacrifice for our sins, that though we were still sinners, Christ died for us. 
that he came on earth to save us because he loves us. And Lord, I pray that as we leave here today, we will continue to reflect on your sacrifice and that we'll continue to uh, be joyous in your arrival and your coming. And Lord, I, I pray that you, um, you help us um, to continue to feel your presence and to continue to feel your Holy Spirit that dwells inside of us. Um, and we ask in everything in Jesus' name. Amen. Our benediction this uh, Christmas morning comes from Zeph- Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 17. The Lord your God is in your midst, a mighty one who will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you by his love. He will exalt over you with loud singing. Merry Christmas and God bless.